So my name is Elijah Anderson. I'm the Sterling Professor of Sociology at Yale. And I'm the author of Black and White Space. Since the end of the Civil Rights Movement, large numbers of black people have made their way into settings previously occupied only by white people. Though the reception has been mixed, overwhelmingly white neighborhoods, schools, workplaces, restaurants, and other public spaces remain. Uh, black people perceive these settings as the white space, which they often consider to be informally off limits for people like them. Meanwhile, despite the growth of an enormous black middle class, many white people assume that the natural black space is that destitute and fearsome locality so commonly featured in the public media, including popular books, music, and videos, and the TV news, the iconic ghetto. Now, white people typically avoid black space, but black people are required to navigate the white space as a condition of their existence. Now, several years ago, I vacationed in Wellfleet, Massachusetts, pleasant uh, Cape Cod town full of upper middle class white people. Vacation as a working class white resident. Now during the two weeks that my family and I spent there, I encountered very few other black people. We, we rented uh, a beautiful cottage about a mile from the town center, which consisted of a library, a few restaurants, stores, catering to tourists. Early one weekday morning, I jogged down the road from the cottage uh, through the town center and made my way to Route 6, which runs the length of the Cape from Sagamore Bridge to Provincetown. It was a beautiful morning, about 75 degrees, low humidity and clear blue skies. And I had jogged on this spot on many occasions. At 6 a.m. the road was deserted with only an occasional passing car. I was enjoying my run that morning, listening to nature sounds and feeling a sense of serenity. It it seemed like I had the whole place to myself. And suddenly, a red pickup truck appeared and stopped dead in the middle of the road. I looked over the driver, a middle-aged white fellow, who was obviously trying to communicate something to me. He was waving his hands and gesticulating, and I immediately thought he might be in distress or in need of help, but I could not make out what he was saying. I stopped, cut my, cut my hand to my ear to hear him better, and yelled back, what did you say? And it was then that he made himself very clear. Go home, he yelled, dragging out the words to make sure I understood. I felt provoked, but I waved him off and continued on my way. <laughs> but this incident not only spoiled my morning jog, uh, it nagged at me for the rest of the day. When navigating the white space, black people often do so with a persistent deficit of credibility and experience random acts of disrespect. One of my informants said, dodging racism is like dodging raindrops, and if you walk in the rain, you're bound to get wet. Mm -hmm.